Hello everybody, it is Lily and today I decided I'm going to draw on the computer. And I don't have a tablet, so I decided to draw with a mouse. And this challenge seemed pretty fun. I've seen other YouTubers do this and so I wanted to give it a go. Um, I decided to draw in Photoshop. Some people don't um, have the best opinion of this program. It's mainly for photo manipulation, but it was like the the mo most convenient program I had on my computer for this. So I just decided to draw my character in Photoshop and as you can see here I am doing a sketch. So I looked up a photo reference because th it's really helpful to look up a photo reference. So I found this stock photo on the internet and I decided to base my character off of this guy crouching here. Um, at first I wanted to draw my character feeding a baby bear, like a, a fish or something, because I think it'd be cute if my character had a bear companion, and maybe I'll do that in the future. But it soon didn't really work out, so she just ended up basically just posing and kind of pointing at some animal tracks in the snow. So I did a couple sketch layers. I did a really, really rough one, and then I did a more refined one on top, and then I did my final line art on top of that layer. And I used the lasso tool and some transforming just to shift things around and move the facial features and stuff. Um, it's kind of funny, you'll see in a moment, the face I come up with first looks very strange. <laughs> and I was like, eh, close enough for now. And so that was just kind of the face I came up with. And I just wanted to make sure I got all of the quote-unquote major like, details down and the pose roughly down. I think that one of the biggest challenges with this um, mouse drawing challenge is that um, you don't have varying line weight. Because with tablets, there's um, a, like a detection of the pressure that you're putting down on the tablet. And so you can vary how thick or thin your lines are and with this mouse I do not have pressure sensitivity so all of the lines are very consistent and are the same shape um, so that that kind of made it tricky to make the sketch look more dynamic I suppose so here I had the final sketch and so I deleted the layer below it and I started working on the line art layer so I zoomed into the face and then I lightened the final sketch layer and I started adding my final lines on top. And I just wanted to make sure that my lines were accurate and consistent. Wanted them to look not too shaky, which is kind of hard to manage with a mouse. And um, yeah, so I started drawing the eyes, trying to make them look a little bit more symmetrical, I suppose. And um, yeah, change the variation in the line weight. So I got some thinner lines for the eyelashes. And I decided I wanted to fix the way her eyes were looking. So I used the lasso tool and the transform function to change the shape and the, um, I, the, the shape and size and rotation of the eye to make it look better. Um, I think that's one thing that I like about digital drawing is that you can use these tools to completely pick up an area and completely change it. It's very versatile and very forgiving. Um, with traditional medium to fix something like this, you would have to literally erase it and redraw it. And at some point you can't keep doing that because the paper will get kind of stained almost. So that's one thing that I really like about digital drawing. And here I am doing the line art for the hair. I think that hair is one of my favorite parts of drawing characters. I like drawing blowy, breezy hair and I like making it super fluffy. And so I was really just trying to capture some wind going through her, her hair, kind of blowing it to the side and trying to just make it look, yeah, voluminous. Yeah, so I'm just working on the line art for her clothing and for all the details on her clothing. And 
Once I finally had the line art done, I decided I wanted to start coloring. And so there are plenty of different ways you can approach coloring. I decided to use the select tool and to select the different areas, um, expand the selection so it gets kind of underneath the line art there, and then fill it in with the paint bucket tool. So when I was coming up with the colors for this character, the color scheme, I decided I wanted her to be very light colors, and she lives in a snowy climate, so almost kind of like a snow bunny, and I imagine that they're, um, the people she lives with, they use um, leather and other various animal hides as their clothing to keep nice and warm, and so I decided to use lots of taupes and browns and tans. And for the little bit of color that I do have on this character, I decided I wanted to make her eyes green and I wanted to give her kind of an orangey, um, kind of a yellow-orange um, waistband because I thought that the contrast between these two colors was pretty nice. Um, they are, I would say that these colors are quite analogous. We have green and yellow and red and so that is one side of the color wheel. And I wanted this character just to just kind of have that harmonious um, feeling rather than some nice um, like complementary colors or contrast in that regard. And now I'm trying to work on the background and I was trying to decide if I wanted this guy to be a nice pale blue, if I wanted it to be overcast with kind of a light gray color. And when I added the white of the snow underneath her, that just seemed like unintentional, the sky being that color. So I decided to go with more of a um, pale blue sky, and and backgrounds are definitely something I'd like to work on, um, and I, I just need to keep practicing and, and trying to make them look intentional. All right, so next up is shading, and I wanted to try to do something smart and work with light sources, because I don't do that all that often. I just kind of do like, you know, top down lit kind of just normal everyday uh, shadows, I suppose, like a front lit shadow. And so I kind of wanted to have this um, sun casting light behind her and to have um, her face and the front of her a more dark shadow. And so I added a the, the color of the sky, I believe, I added the color of the sky completely on top of the character. And then I started um, erasing away some of the, uh, the, sh the shading. And I really like this way of shading. I think it's simple, it's effective. Um, I think it, it looks pretty nice. Again, with that simplicity, um, I kind of almost wish that I would have just stopped while I was ahead and just left it having this more simple shading going on, but I wanted to test my skills and push it further, and so then I start doing all sorts of st just stuff. I start adding multiple layers of shadows, I start adding some highlights. Um, I think it looks like very interesting in the end, but there's something nice about just this simple shading, and I think I will explore this more in the future. And I'm using a pastel brush, it's just one of the preloaded brushes in Photoshop, to sh do a little bit of shading. I kind of wanted to add some, again, some texture into it, make it look more like a, a kind of have a painterly feel to it. Alright, so this is when it starts taking a different turn. I decided I wanted to try adding some highlights. And so what a better way to add highlights than to color dodge it. And so I was kind of doing that. Um, I was making it look all nice and glowy. And um, at, yeah, at first I was like, oh, this doesn't look too bad. It kind of, you know, changed some of the modes of the layers, the line art, kind of mixed it up, trying to s see what's going on. And yeah, at first it looked pretty all right. And then I just start going hog wild with it. I just, yeah, I'm like, okay, am I gonna change the color of the line art here? Am I gonna change it there? I don't know. I guess I was just experimenting, kind of feeling it out, seeing um, what I could do. 
and it was good to get back into digital art. So I decided that this drawing needed some more contrast, probably because I was decreasing the contrast with the line art, and so I started adding some more shadows, and I was kind of making it a purplish tint. I don't know. I was just messing around, having a good time, and so I started adding more shadows. So then I decided to um, change the line art and to add that contrast back in, and I really think that that's what this drawing needed. So after I finished coloring the character, I just decided to work on the background. I added some gradients, I changed the line art, um, I decided to add, you know, a shadow underneath her. And the background just needed something else. So I took the um, lasso tool and I drew out some rough mountains in the background and I used a gradient tool to make these kind of Ba um, background mountains kind of look like they're fading off into the distance. And so this is the final drawing. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think it was more fun than anything and it was a great learning experience. I think I would like to try practicing at drawing with a mouse more, perhaps realism or other types of art. And I would like to hear from you. Do you do digital art or do you prefer traditional art? What kind of mediums do you use? And if you do do digital art, do you do it on a tablet? Do you do it on a computer? How do you do it? Anyway, just let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you later. Bye.